Good evening. Welcome to the latest special from Last Bell Boxing uh, in partnership with Southbank Bar. Uh, we've got a, a special guest on tonight, uh, Francis Crows. How are you, mate? I'm good, mate. How are you? Yeah, very good, thank you. Uh, joined by uh, regular presenter Carl as well. Nice to meet you, So, um, for the people that might not know you, Francis, I'm just going to do a little bit of a lead and then we'll crack on, pal. Is that yeah, right? no problem, pal. So, so Francis's career spanned from 2008 to 2014. Francis, if I'd say anything wrong here, mate, correct me, please. Yeah, well done, mate. No worries. Um, you get a lot of things wrong. And... Sorry, Carl. As in, you get a lot of things wrong, so you might be jumping in quite yeah, a bit. You might be jumping yeah, it's another problem. Uh, 2008 to 2014, uh, you, your career spanned from fly to super bantam. Yeah. Um, uh, you had 35 fights. That's correct, with yeah. one um, and, and having 34 defeats, but that doesn't tell the full picture, does it? No, I don't think it does in a lot of journeyman careers, to be honest, yeah. There's a lot of good talent out there for journeyman. Just if you don't have the fans behind you, you're not getting on the show, you're not getting a win, are you? Yeah, there's, yeah. A same, there's the same way you saw having the way dressing room, you have to knock them out for a draw. Uh, yeah, it, it is what exactly, it is, isn't it? Mate. Exactly, and, and uh, I think Carl will agree with me here without journeyman in the sport, boxing wouldn't survive. Well, Carl's been in a lot of meetings for me when they used to get called in some house on the board. And he sat there and told him that he did the bloodline of the boxing, do you know what I mean? Well, you take these gentlemen away from the sport, especially the good ones that give the like, fighters a good fight and take them a distance. Take them away. You're going to get these jet no prospects. Oh, half of my mentally even ready to be in a good hard fight anyway. Fighting each other. Then they're just going to quit. And how many crazies or suicides are you not going to see, do you know what I mean? Because of it. it how many times, also, how many times have you saved a show? You know, oh, I, was like, I think I popped Paul Butler at about, I think it was about a week, two weeks. It was been two weeks max notice, the short notice. And I know I, I lose seven to eight pounds like win a quick space of time. Wow. But for that fight, I was just busy for seven, eight days because I didn't have a like a strength and nutritionist. Or I had like my coach, but for them, eight days, I was just running and eating apples and water. And that's how I made the weight of fight Butler. Which is no, especially on the day, same day of win, it's no good for anyone, really. No. Are you? Do you think it's a better thing uh, that that Wayne's an hour a day before? The day before, I think it is, depending on like. Yeah, it is anyway. Need let's be honest, because if you refuel, you can get your strength and energy back in your side, of your body, and even the people that like are dehydrated on the scales and twenty five is not going to make much no difference, but it will help them in the fight, won't it? So it does help, but I think. It's much safer for the sport as well. In terms it's not safer, that's what I'm saying. You're not going to get a lot uh, like when you're getting brain damage or late knockouts. Like the way Jamie um, Jamie Conlon went, went, was it? No, was it Mick Conlon? Who went against uh, Lee Wood. Lee Wood. You see, obviously it was an hard, grueling fight, but you see, he must have been a bit tight in the weight as well. Just his goal like that. He was boxing. So the, the fight was close as, wasn't it, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you can see Wood was like braiding every single round of them body shots. I'll catch up with him, but the way he took him out, I didn't see that coming, to be honest. I don't think many people did either. So, Francis, take us back to when you were a kid. What was your What's your first memory of ever watching a boxing match? What was I was you used to, that's how I got into boxing from Prince of Zane. He, he was a showman, wasn't he? The way he used to do with the flip or the ring. Not only yeah. could he talk, he used to back it up, didn't he? Yeah. So, until we met Pereira, which is an all time famer, do you know what I mean? He come unstuck, wasn't he? The Nazim was the real deal. It wasn't like a lot of these showmen these days where they just talk the talk and they can't back it up. He backed it up, didn't he? That's he got me. Power in the man's winter. Yeah, he got me the boxing miss. And not only that, because I was I was um, 10 weeks premature born and I weighed three pounds seventeen, but within a week I dropped it to two pounds seven. So they put me in an incubator for eight weeks. And then I started having an epileptic fit, uh, fe febrile fit or something like that was called from 18 months to eight year old. Right, and the doctors told them, "Mom, that I'll never be able to do a normal, like a contact sport in my life, or live a normal life." So that was the main thing in my head that I really wanted to do a sport like boxing, complete like that. Wrong. And then when the time pro, I reckon if he, if I ref, think if I met Carl Greaves a lot earlier than I did, I'd have done a lot better in my career. I met Carl really when I was already a bit more or less mentally a journeyman. I mean, I, I remember talking to um, Liam Smith at a show and. Uh, Dublin it was when I boxed Jamie Conlon. He just started for that fight as well. On the pads when I boxed Jamie Conlon, I dislocated my shoulder and, and, on, and the warm-up. 
I actually wanted to pull out of a coach at the time who passed away, Graham O'Malley was called. Um, said me, if you pull out now, we were there for the money, that was, that was our job, wasn't it? He said, if you pull out, you're not going to get paid. That's simple. So I went in a box. And after three or four rounds, I could only, I threw my jab, that's all through. I done it, it was on Sky or something, I don't know if you watched it. But for the full three or four rounds, I threw my jab, and I, tra- I forgot about my injury in the about third or fourth round. I tried to throw a right hand, and I screamed on the middle of the ring. And the ref left, left me in that round. Let me go back to the corner and come over to me in the corner and said, what's up, what's my view? And I was a fight, you're going to deny it. He, he picked my right arm up and I, I couldn't move it hardly. So he said, he wanted to fight off. And that's how I got uh, stopped against Jamie Conlon. I was talking to Liam Smith in the chain, in the hotel and after it. And he said to me, like, how do you do? Because you're not actually a German. He said, I could mean in boxing before he comes like he was. Me and him boxed about four or five shows again because I was on it. I was on that little Olympia. Um, and he said to me, you're not an actual gentleman, you come to win. I've actually seen you win some of your fights. He said, it doesn't kill you. But I, but I knew, like, I knew then it was just money, do you know what I mean? Because you're not getting it. You're not getting it in the way it shows. You're just not, unless you knock them out. Or you can really go in there and, like, take the fight away from that lad and win everything around. They're not going to give you that. Any close fight, or even if the lad wins by two rounds of it. How many times have you seen... Hello, Alvarez. Lose a fight by about three or four rounds, and he gets it. It's when he talks in boxing, doesn't it? Bullshit war. Do you get a bit disillusioned then, Francis, when that's going off? Yeah, you do, mate. When it comes to the, I'm put aside for Carl Griggs, he was getting me good fights, he was getting big fights, which I would have tried a lot harder if I met him no earlier in my career. But then that point in my head, I thought to myself, what's the point in me killing myself in this fight? Just to get them at the end of the fight, to, like, knock me nothing. I boxed um, Kevin Satchel in the Liverpool Olympia. We got fight of the night. And I honestly thought I should have edged that first. I could be wrong, do you know what I mean? But in the fight, when you're in the close fight, I thought I took that yeah, fight. Yeah. First one. The second time he batted me, he pinged me around the ring. But the first fight, I honestly thought I got it. And you don't get fight of the night in the way of show for nothing, do you? Especially against Kevin Satchel. He's a, fucking, he's a hell of a talent, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's the best person I've boxed. Really? Yeah, I honestly do. I've been in some good fights, like, Oh, but uh, Kevin Satchel, but at the times, from what I remember in that correct fight, up from the box, I, I drink Kevin Satchel the eyes, yeah. He was sharp, so sharp, like really take, sharp. Take take us back to to your your first, um, the first time you went into a gym. What was your experience like? Oh, I begged my mum because my big brother did boxing, um, and he did quite well in the amateurs boxing. He got a few national finals. He got stopped by Jamie Boxing, the boys club final one year. So I always wanted to do boxing all because of him. Because I look, my dad went to jail for drug dealing when he got 16 years. I was a kid. Right. So I didn't have a dad. And I looked up with my brother a lot. So I begged my mum for years to do boxing. She wouldn't let me for two or three years. Until the doctors give me a clear, very clear and saying, it's okay. Be like, if you want to try it, you can. But after about two years, my mum took me to boxing. I went to South Bank Gym. And the first people I've seen in there were looked up with from, and I still do it, to be honest with you, even if I train from now, Paul Truscott, he was in there. And he was, he was probably well, the best or one of the best in the gym at the time. I just wanted to be like him, to be honest with you. Day, I used to watch him in amateur training all the time and try things that he did. I used to want to be as quick as he was. He was, yeah. he was sharp, he was really sharp in the amateurs. He did well in the pros, didn't he? He had a lot of hard fights. So he's, the, he's probably the person I've looked up to most of my career, around yeah. So you, you, you're in this gym, you're looking up to fighters. <laughs> Did you go there thinking, this is just going to build me up, this is this is going to give me a bit of spirit? Or no, that's not. I, not, not I, I went there for the reason I had every intention from a kid. I've been a world champion. That was my dream. Right. I wanted to be a world champion. That's the one I wanted to prove I was the best in the world. That's why when I turned pro, I, had, I always had the attitude, I want to fight the best. I don't yeah. swear about them to fight journeymen or sit about for five months not being able to sell tickets. No, I want to gain there. If I'm good enough to beat them, I'll, get, I'll beat them, do you know what I mean? If, or if the luck's going to be on my side, I'll get the luck. And I could have a career like Sam Egg. He was meant to get beat, wasn't he? But I mean, he turned a journeyman career into yeah, yeah. a championship career, really. Yeah. But what's your doing that? It doesn't happen do you? Like, I was very green when I turned pro, I signed with the fun do. Belgium, uh, is he from Belgium? He is, isn't he? You know who that is? Um, I'm not sure from. No, he is, yeah, Fando, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because he's not over here that much anymore, is he? I don't think. So I signed with him as my manager. That was only through Graham O'Malley. 
Because Graham used to box through him. And uh, my first fight was in Russia. Well, they're called Belarus. It is probably Russia, isn't it? Yeah, first fight was over there, that. six threes it was. And <laughs> I went over there, to be honest, I was confident. I thought I was going to knock him out. So was I. I trained as hard as I've ever trained in my life. I thought, this is a fresh start in the pros. I can do something. This, my style suits the pros a lot better than it does the amateurs. So I, I can do something here. I got there. Um, John Jack, out of everything that box, he's probably the lightest pudger as well. But my face was marked to pieces after the fight. Right. I got, I, I thought he had something in his glove, but I don't know. But the reason I, I sort of froze in that fight was that in the change rooms throughout the build even in the week in the hotel and everything, I was confident as I knew inside me, I thought I'm going to go like get a good performance here. It was live on Euro Sport. Yeah. I thought I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, it was on the use of my debut. I thought I'm gonna be able to do something here. Like, I'll knock this kid out and I'll be like, be get some back and behind me or something. Chris Riley, do you know from, him from Israel as well? Yeah, I've heard of him. Yeah, he, he, he turned pro, that's not the same time as me, who we trained together. He thought, like, it was him, there was a gap, then there was me, you know, on the card. At least we were both me and him, we're doing six rounders. I think it was a four round heavy in between, which got knocked out within two rounds. But, I thought it was because it was our first fight all as a team together, or like the experience and stuff like that. After he fought, because he got a draw, um, the, my coach at the time just spent the full time like talking to him. That, and I got warmed up with him about five minutes, you know, before the fight. And right. so that got on my head a lot. I thought, I felt like I went in there cold and not like, I thought like my coaches should have been, not disrespect him anyway, because the coach, you know what I mean, one of them being, was a good mate, like he still is. So I don't, don't think he did like didn't mean anything. It was just inexperienced, I think. Yeah. What, what the should have done is left Riley alone straight after that fight, come straight at me, just concentrate on me. Then we could right. talk to both after it. What I mean? Yeah. That yeah. made me feel more point from the coaches and other being warmed up the pads and stuff like that. And I went in there. I just I think I froze. To be honest, yeah, I did. What a place to go for your debut. I know what I'm saying, mate. That's what I wanted to do. Though. I wanted to. A world champion of boxing, but I only wanted to ever be called a world champion if I was good enough to be a world champion. I wanted, I didn't want to sit here with like an Intercontinental belt or all these Mickey Mouse titles that they have. I don't know, record the 22 fights, 22 wins, but you haven't boxed no one like them factories. Yeah. If I want if I had a victory on my record, if I was going to come a champion, I want to be like, I say I am the best in this country, no one beat me. You know I, mean? I didn't want to sit there and say, Oh, I've avoided him, avoided him, avoid him, but I'm champion. That's not what I started boxing for. What point did that mindset change, Francis? When did you have that moment? Um, it, I reckon it would have been, been not long after Kevin, not not long <clears throat> rather after the Kevin Satchel fight or after the Jamie Conner fight in Ireland. I think it would have been about then. Even then, I, I thought, because my coach at the time, it was Graham, mm. who took me, he, just me and him went. I had I, I had to speak, because he only, this way, I got £600 for six threes in Russia. I'm a debut. Six hundred pound. No, at the time when you first turned pro, I thought it was good. Yeah. You know I thought it was yeah, okay. Yeah. Then I sat over the years. I started getting suspicious about like Graham, not not his brother, who I trust him with my life. And um, I started getting suspicious about him, you know, like dipping the wages and stuff like that. And look, they used to always every single one of my fights. He collected my money after the finish. I even got the ring. He's been gone. He just go straight to the office and collect it. Then he come to me and says, "Oh, there's your money. I took my cut out." So in Ireland, I was already on him. Before the fight, I said to him, listen, Graham, so, was it, I think it was, who was um, Paul Edwards with? Who did he say? Was he with Frank Warren? Or was, was he with Matt Who, Jamie? No, Paul Edwards. He was from the, oh, he was British champion, wasn't he? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, I'm not he's, sure he, what under. I think he boxed Shinny B. Arne, that's sure for the title, didn't he? Um, if, I, if I remember right. I can't think who he's under though. It was whoever that was. It was them. Like it was a big promoter. I said to him, I think it was Frank Maloney. I think that's who it was. I said to him, no. tell Frank I want I want um, a receipt for this fight. He said, obviously, if the taxman starts catch up with me, I've got no receipts. You'll be in time for money. Like, I could be like, start getting me receipts. He said, yeah, yeah, I'll get you receipts after the fight. Obviously, with me and Gene stuff like that. Yeah, go on. I completely forgot about it. I said, I've seen Frank for the money. He said, oh, I've already got it. I, I won't worry about receipts. He went, I've got to ask for it. Uh, we'll ask for it in the morning. We went back to the hotel room because uh, they had an after party. I can't think it was top of that, Bill. I know Paul Edwards won the British title that night, but I can't think it was actually top of the bill. I can't think. It might have been 
What's his name? Even from the two brothers from Yahweh as well, I think, Anna. Both might be Jason Booth. Yeah, Nicky Booth. Yeah, Nicky and Jason Booth. It might yeah, be yeah. Jason, I'm not too sure, because I know boxing is when he come out of retirement, stopped that lad for the British title. Yeah. That was he, he's class and Jason Booth, funny. But yeah, I said yeah. him like and sidetracked there. I said, get my uh, we went back to the hotel because I left they had an after party for that and I couldn't be bothering me. I was in a bit of mood for about all the issues safe, not only that being G. So I went back to the hotel and he went straight to the, uh, the bathroom, of course, and locked the door. And he had some he had written an envelope open, no counting money out. He come out the um, come out the bathroom, he said, there's your wages, there's your money, fight money. I walked in the bathroom, there was a scrumped up envelope on top of the toilet with my name on it. it that was my banker rights that he'd been ordered. For every one of my fights to be done with like money. So I left him after that and I went with his brother. That's when I left Fondu and Sandra Carl. And I think by that point, to be honest, yeah, I was already like thinking, no matter what, how hard I trip, look, as long as I make weight, that was me succeeding in my head, do you know what I mean? I never made, failed to make weight once. And I thought, as long as I make weight, that's my win in my head. I got the fight and think to myself, what's the point of me trying my yards against this kid here and giving it 100%? They'll come to the end of the fight, they're not going to give me nothing. I remember I boxed one time, right? Chris Riley boxed in Liverpool, Olympia. We were both boxing the same night. So, right, somehow, my manager, my manager managed, because he was with us both, managed to get Riley on early enough for us to drive from Liverpool, Olympia, the Wolves, and that's when I boxed. So, what Riley boxed in Liverpool, Olympia, is what I'm saying. And he boxed in Liverpool, Olympia, there's me sat there waiting, obviously nerves as fuck sat there watching the boxing fight. He was taking nerves energy out of me anyway, he done sat around the ground yeah, and fight. Yeah. yeah. So Riley boxed, then we had to drive all the way to Wolves, and I boxed. As soon as I got there, Wolves, that's what I kept looking on straight in the ring. Was it, no was way. That, I boxed, I can't think his name, he was, he was an ABA champion, he was unbeaten at the time for Wolves. I'm not even joking, I batted him for four rounds. I like, I cut his eyes, I batted him. I'm not, like, I know I batted him. Never give me a round. Never give me a round. When the box Chris Edwards, I was a short notice as well. And my biggest fear at that point was that I used to all think like I'm not asked who will fight, I want to fight the best. But, like it's also it's a bit of if you get knocked out cold there, you don't mean for no who I fight, but you're not knocking me out. That was my main thing, you're not knocking me out. I'm yeah. proud, I pride myself on not getting like ever knocked out with an headshot. Um so I remember when I got the call to fight Chris Edwards, that was that really short notice that. It was on um Ryan Rhodes. Ricky Atkins built was in Manchester. It was called a uh, show champions. Ryan Rhodes topped it. Everyone on it had a title. And I boxed Chris Edwards on there. That, so I sent a Graham on the phone when he rang me. He said, Do you want to fight Chris Edwards? I said, do, the only thing he asked, do you reckon he'll knock me out or not? But he was good, Chris. And I know he had a really good work rate. And I was born with asthma. And obviously, I had epilepsy from 18 months onwards. But the, the, my main fear was my asthma. Like, I don't know. I know he didn't wouldn't knock me out with shot. I didn't want him to be knock me out where I'm not tired. He just I can't keep stopping from throwing. Yeah. So that's the first thing he asked, do you rent really knock me out? So I don't think so, but you're getting decent money. The course wasn't bothering anyway. So I took the fight anyway. I mean, even before the fight in the change rooms, like I remember one of the coaches in there, he said, you, didn't you box um Kevin Sat and I think I'm sure that Jamie Ed, the Chris Edwards fight was after the Kevin Sasio fight. And he said, didn't you fight Chris uh, Kevin Sato at the Olympia about fight tonight against him? He must have only seen the first one. Right. And I said, yeah. He said, yeah. He went, if, it's, if it was, if it's you, then this should be a hell of a fight tonight. I'm going to you and Chris Edwards could be fighting tonight. Like this. That gave me confidence, no going into the fight for in the change rooms. I thought, yeah, I'm going to go for it here. I got in the ring with him, he was tiny. I was looking at him, I thought, I could actually stop you without him. I'm not even joking. I, did, I know I beat Chris Edwards. He didn't give me a round again. But this way, at the end of the fight, if you do your research, be able to find out. I don't know who did the commentary on the fight. One of them was a former European champion. I can't think of his name, but he came up to me after the end of the fight when I got the ring. He said to me, um, put your hands around me on the fight. He said, I couldn't say the commentary, but he said, don't worry about yeah, that fight there. But I lost loads of my life. I said, he hasn't been European champion. He said, you're good enough to win a title. And Ricky Atten's mum and dad were actually stood up clapping and cheering for me coming in the fight. He didn't give me a round. I don't think it's Chris Edwards either. I know I beat him. Don't get me wrong, 35 fights. If I can be honest, I reckon I won about. They're all against good kids. I reckon yeah. I won about. If I'm be fair with myself, I reckon about 13, 14. I, sh- I reckon I could have won mm-hmm. or should have won. And there, a lot of them, I, I know, I admit, I got beat. Anthony Nelson won the box and he battered me. I wasn't, I wasn't mentally like, I wasn't asked anymore. I was just trained to be even weird. 
And I knew my toughness and my cleverness could get me through rounds, get me through fights. I know when to hold. I know when to eat on sly. I know when to spit my gum shirt out. I know when to give you a low blow. I know to get through rounds, you know what I mean? You can, I know when to put people on the side. They can have the leg to slow them down if they're good on the footwork or they're in half. And they also, my first instinct was whenever I knew I was boxing a puncher, and the biggest puncher I boxed was Lewis Browning. He seen he made me see stars in the fight. Um, um my motto was every time I was boxing a puncher, was good get on his chest, go at him. Yeah. My head, he's taking away their power. I can't load up my shot you all right in front of them on their chest. Need a bit of space, don't know these big banners. Yeah. And then I yeah, yeah. so I knew out of pinch rounds, not pinch rounds, get room for rounds, and I knew if I was there, I could fit it like kidding. So Francis, in your in your twenty fifth fight. <laughs> You went up to Scotland and you was on the Ricky Burns, Terence Crawford bit, wasn't you? Yeah, is that against Scott Allen? Yeah, against Scott Allen. T tell yeah. us a bit about that. You got some stories from that. From that. Sure did. Yeah, <laughs> me, John Green, old time professional. I took him before he turned professional. I took him with me, right? And there, uh, because the win was at the casino the day before. Oh, there's a massive shot. No, it wasn't. I'm lying. The win was at there, wasn't it? It was in the big shopping centre. Yeah, that's where right. that was. So I took him with me, and I took a few. I ended up thinking about four or five minutes in the hotel, right? Oh, yeah, I almost got in, in trouble for sure. But the, the night before, I walked around. I was just more buzzing about the. I was sat in the change rooms with Terry Crawford. Do you know what I mean? I what I didn't. I met Ricky Benz a few times. I'm never talking about. I've been around him a few times. And same as Amsey Josh, who's just up the coming. I never re really rated him anyway. So I, unless I rate him, I'm not really bothered about meeting you. And there was there was a few other like up and coming stars or suits at the time. He's a fighters. Scott Cardell box on the show. The only person I was asked about was Ricky Burns. That's you. I sat next to him in the he come in the change rooms, right? No, did them for the win. Because we were all some reason they put us all in the win in the same room for the win. And it was in it, it was in the, on a big massive uh, shop set in the middle of everything. I felt like a dickhead, mate. I wasn't, I wasn't used to stuff like that. Um, but we put us all in the win. Everyone was in there, apart from uh, Crawford at the time. Crawford come in with his sister, the T shirt, whatever she is. And about four other people, and obviously his coaches, they come in singing and dancing. I swear, but that's when you know this kid didn't give a fuck. He's in Glasgow. He's fighting the world champion. He's walking in the chain, walking in a, a, a room for foreign fighters. Doesn't know a single person in there. Even his full team's just singing and uh, moving in like that. Just sat down, cool as fuck, Robert. Sat down on the floor, put his head for all day, and just chilled. He didn't, he didn't bat an eyelid. I knew then, I knew Baird was in trouble then. Someone doesn't come over from America. Ricky Baird's a good fighter. I mean, yeah, he's yeah. a pretty world is he either fucking mental or he's fucking brilliant? Well, One yeah, or that's exactly what I was thinking. I thought this kid's rather crazy and he's going to go for it and more. He'd rather get banged out or just be off his nut or he's going to be absolutely special. And it was the second one he was special. Yeah, yeah. It was the best fight I've ever seen live. Unbelievable, Crawford. But he'll beat uh, Errol Spence with ease. I'm telling you. He'll stop Spence. No one will beat Matt Walters. I think he'll even go up and he'll be. I think he could even potentially stop uh, Charlo. He's special, Crawford. He's special, I'm telling you now. Top three pound for pound, without a doubt. That's the that's the show as well when I just I seen you know, watch Josh Rick live for the first time. You know he's novice at the time. I know he's overhyped and he's he's not what he's what the media and Eddie M saying about him. And it was, uh, I think it was Josh was the fifth fight, wasn't it? Yeah, I knew it was early on, but he's already the Olympic champion, wasn't he? He's a world yeah. champion. You know what I mean? You spec someone even in the fifth row fight, the Olympic champion, the world champion. Are you a world champion? Or do you get silver medal? No, no, you got even gold. <laughs> Even goals as well on that. You expect someone with that calibre from the amateurs to be like, a lot more technically efficient than he was. And his footwear is slow on TV, but Dean's slow on live. Like, I'd say it'd be the easiest fight if Tyson Fury's grave that happens. He'll, he'll spank him. Won't he be an hard fight? Are you surprised with how his, his last few fights have gone? Oh, Joshua's? Yeah. He's lost his metal, mate, to be honest, yeah. I think once Ruiz chinned him, his aura of invincibilities went. And he's believed, which I've got to say, it's not the punches on the chin that make champions go soft, it's a pat on the back. I think he started believing by that point, all Eddie Earns hype and all the media hype and everything else, what people are saying about him. And he didn't believe that, uh, really. Tyson Fury's ever coming back. That's why he's calling him out away for that point. No one believed Fury was coming back. He better yeah. hope he'd come back. You better he's actually, him, pretty he's destroyed Eddie Ernst and Josh's family. Yeah, yeah. Well, at that point, it was going plain sail. I did not see Fury coming back. And Fury's come back and just stole the shiny. But I think against Ruiz, once he got chinned in that fight, 
I think he's lost his uh, in his head. I think his mental edge has gone. And I think now he's fighting with a bit of fear behind him because he knows he chinned and be hurt. And he also knows he hasn't got the gas tank to go at it. I had for 12 rounds. 